It's Friday, June 18th, 2021, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, the minister of works confident there won't be any load shedding this summer. Health officials say COVID-19 health and safety protocols reaping dividends. We're celebrating fathers. And the crab man, Elon Moxie, is in the house. So let's start the morning off right. Father's Day to all the fathers out there and welcome to the morning edition. I'm LaDawn Davis. Good morning all the fathers and good morning to everybody else. I'm Charles Fish and I'm a little, little worried this morning because on Mother's Day I was oh. not here, I was in Bryland. <laughs> but I got to see the set and you all had the whole spread. No, we didn't. And now we only have this one father rose for, 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 for Father's for Day. For tell me, tell me what is going on because you are in our interior and decorator. No, you brought these flowers here this morning and I think Mr. Royal told you that, yeah, men don't get flowers on Father's Day. So, yeah, and pink flowers, no, definitely not. It's going to be an interesting interview <laughs> with Reverend Royal to find yeah. out why do fathers do not accept flowers yeah. on Father's Day. And you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be doing something special with something your girls, special. Sure. This is a surprise. I hope they surprise me, but <laughs> We are in a giving mode this yes, morning. We have two yes. gifts to give away. Yes. And let's get that question up on the screen right, right away. What year did Father's Day originate? 502-3870. If you can answer that, you'll win yourself a Father's Day spirit box. And then the next question, as we put it up on the screen as well, what is the official flower of Father's Day? And you can win yourself a full of beach chair so two questions, two prizes for our fathers this morning. Ladies have been winning all the prizes. Let's have some men call in this morning. Some pretty good questions. Some pretty, I, I, I know you don't know about it. I don't so, know. So everybody I know they're <laughs> out there Googling, the phones will start going <laughs> off. But before we get the answer to those questions, let's throw it out to the streets to our Desmond Saunders. Well, Charles and LaDon, I'm here on Market and Hay Streets by this traffic light. Now, of late, there have been a number of traffic accidents. Traffic police want motorists to drive with extreme caution and care, uh, noting of the many of accidents and issues on this stretch here. Overcast skies, meteorologists predicting rain for the most part. So as you head out, you want to be careful and cautious as you drive and traverse the streets. But have a great weekend. Happy Father's Day. Want to, want, want to extend a happy Father's Day to my dad, Nat Saunders, always watching uh, the ZNS Network and Morning Edition. You guys have a great weekend. Charles and LaDawn, back to you. Thanks a lot, Dad. We are waking up to 80 degrees, some clouds, winds east, southeast at 7 miles per hour. Humidity 83%. High pressure ridge across the air will weaken slightly as it retreats eastward, while very warm and humid conditions persist through tonight. Fall areas weather very be cloudy, warm, slightly hazy and humid with a bit breezy to breezy conditions and isolated showers throughout tonight. Today's high temperature reaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit, overnight low 77. As we look ahead to Saturday, we have some times of clouds and sun, 90 in the day, 80 at night. And for Father's Day, sunny and breezy in the morning. Daytime high temperature 90 and 80 in the nighttime. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works, the Honorable Desmond Bannister, making his contribution to the 2021-2022 budget on Thursday. Mr. Bannister admitted that Bahamas Power and Light did experience recent power outages here in New Providence due to weather challenges or drivers knocking down power poles, but assured residents that BPL is ready for the summer. We can safely account for a minimum of between 315 and 350 megawatts in summer against an expected summer peak load of 250 megawatts. The highest, for reference, sir, the highest recorded peak reached in the Bahamas is 248 megawatts. And that means we should have from almost from 60 uh, to 100 megawatts uh, of redundancy. So Mr. Speaker, and that was in 2017. So Mr. Speaker, we feel confident that there will be no load shedding this summer. Health officials say COVID-19 health and safety contingency measures are reaping dividends as the country is seeing a decline in national COVID-19 numbers. It's a trend that the Minister of Health detailed in his contribution to the budget debate on Thursday. 
bed occupancy rates are on the decline in every single COVID-19 care facility. Just a few months ago, I shared in this honorable place that three of these facilities were under significant pressure and was almost at capacity. Today, the picture is better. Bed occupancy rates as of yesterday at Princess Margaret Hospital is 57.9%. At Doctors Hospital West is 31%. And at South Beach Health Center is 30%. And in Grand Bahama, it is 8.7%. Oh, yeah. There are a total of four persons in the entire country receiving ICU level care for their COVID-19 care. Mr. Speaker, also the positivity rate is trending downward currently sitting at 9%, from a high in the third wave of 16%, a 43.5% reduction in the positivity rate. A 56-year-old male of New Providence, the latest person to succumb to COVID-19, according to the Ministry of Health's latest release. He died more than a week ago on June 10, pushing the death toll to 241. 53 cases were also reported, 37 here in New Providence, 13 over in Grand Bahama, 2 in Abaco, and 1 in Eleuthera. 18 males and 35 females make up the new cases. Active cases now stand at 740 with 22 new recoveries. 38 persons remain in the hospital with 3 in the intensive care unit. An intense investigation into those six murders that happened on Jerome Avenue on Chesapeake Road. Police initially reported that on April 15th, six men who had just been released from police custody were passengers inside a silver Honda Inspire riding on that thoroughfare when individuals in a white Kia SUV trailed behind them. Four men in black then emerged from the SUV, two with high-powered weapons, and shot at the victims. A 19-year-old female and a 2-year-old girl also sustained gunshot wounds in this massacre. Here's the latest update from Assistant Police Commissioner responsible for the criminal management and criminal investigations, Solomon Cash. We are looking at about five persons of interest. Uh, we are not going to release those names to the public at this time, but there are five persons of interest we're looking at. And in short order, we should be bringing them in custody because they, we believe that they have uh, relative information us to uh, be progressing in this investigation. We're using all our resources, basically our technical resources and our scientific approach to this investigation. Uh, and that is what we do. We have the experts who are on the ground who are assisting the detectives in uh, unraveling exactly what happened at that scene. And it's been a tumultuous past couple of days for Cabbage Beach vendors as they were prohibited from accessing the beach. Goose spokesman Larry Miller gave his take on the issue. 85% of it, of us, of the vendors, already get their license, already uh, clean up the beach, and we're looking forward to come to work. Especially, on, especially in the second week of July, because the first de de uh, deadline that passed, we, we didn't, we wasn't finished yet. For the second one in July, we was looking forward to do this. Up comes all our stuff out in the road. All the stuff off the beach in the road, all the beams, uh, all the chairs and umbrellas break up in the road out there. That's what caused all this problem, all this to come back out here now. That's what caused us now we can't go back to work until the second week in July. And that's, we, we looking forward to that. So we're gonna come back out here every other day we take a look back at today in Bahamian history on June 18, 1935, Territorial Commander for the West Indies, Robert Henry, opened the new Salvation Army Hall on Mackey Street. Also on June 18, 1948, Adastro Gardens was formally opened after eight years of work by Hedley Edwards. And when we come back, we're celebrating fathers. We are now joined by Reverend Sam Roll. He's the president of the Bahamas Boys Club, and he's talking about Father's Day. Now, the first question I need you to answer, what is the difference between a father and a daddy? Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. The difference between a father and a daddy, a father is one who nurtures and takes care of his responsibility. A daddy is just a daddy. So anybody can be a daddy, but a father is one who nurtures and takes care of 
of his seed. And now, so, now right. Bahamian mm -hmm. men get a lot of flack during this time of the year, and as we indicated, as we got on the show, the flowers, the gifts, and everything, and all we get is crab and rice. Boy, that's so, that's so right. <laughs> I hope this Sunday that wise ladies, you don't really cook all that crab and rice for father, for daddy. Change it. But they get flat because the stigma of both men and fathers is that we are no good, we are X, Y, and Z. But the truth, let us say, be told, fathers are important in their children's mentorship of their lives. How should a father hmm. groom his children? Because everybody has their way of, of bringing it up their kids. Well, they go back to what the Bible taught, um, taught us. Fathers nurture their children. And when you look at how Jesus was nurtured through the Holy Spirit, we are to take care of our seed just like that. It isn't magical, but we just need to take a footstep of what the Bible taught us and teaches us and take care of our children and nurture them properly. The Bible wants us to train up a child in the way he should go, that when he's yet old, he will never depart of the teaching that you taught that young child. And as president of the Bahamas Boys Club, your mentorship program, tell us about that. The mentorship program, we started in 1998 with only three boys. Today, we have a mentorship of young men of 1,275 boys. It's basically, we teach them respect, discipline, and communication. We are in South and Mang of Keandres, Cat Island, Long Island. We're getting ready now to go to Freeport, Grand Bahama. And most of our young boys come from um, broken homes, and our job is to mentorship them let teach them the biblical principle of what God has taught us. And final question, do you feel this is going to be a special Father's Day for us? Well, I hope it will be a special Father's Day for me <laughs> because I mentioned all these young boys and early this morning at 6 o'clock, I got a phone call all the way from Nashville, Tennessee from a young boy who I mentor from Carlton E. Francis School. And all he said, Mr. Rolls, just do well and happy Father's Day. And I hope all of the fathers, and I hope I get all the flowers. I don't want no pink flowers. <laughs> I don't want that. The dawn says she doesn't give me something. I want that. I want my dinner. I want my $100 gift certificate. <laughs> I want my cologne. And plus, I need extra. <laughs> so whatever you and Child Fisher get for me today, bang, we want all of that. Well, Pastor, thanks for having you on the morning edition this morning at an early Father's Day to you. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us. Thank you, sir. And Reverend Roe, we're going to give you all of that for Father's Day. Thank you so much. Father's Day is just a few hours away, and the co-owner of a famous dining spot and winery is expressing appreciation to her father for the impact he not only made on her life, but the lives of his employees and the hospitality industry in the Bahamas. He always told us um, from a very young age that whatever career you chose, you had to love it. And following in the footsteps of her father, veteran hotelier and owner of the Great Cliff Hotel and Restaurant, Enrico Gazzaroli, has been a rewarding experience for his daughter, Roberta Gazzaroli. Roberta adopted her father's tourism business sense and believes the strong bond the two share drives the success of the family business. I kind of fell into the hotel industry because of, you know, the family business. It's been the family business since we moved to the Bahamas since 1978. So in the summers, we were, um, we, both my brother and I worked in the hotel. We did every job imaginable from cleaning the pool, doing laundry, dishwashing, back of the house, front of the house. So we, you know, we learned the business from the inside out. He pushes us all to do better, and that's the reason why Great Cliff is what it is, because of his zeal and enthusiasm and his passion. Um, and, you know, we, we appreciate that when you see, you know, the lovely reviews that the guests give you, the return clientele, and, you know, everybody working together and making life, you know, making our tourism industry turn and keeping the guests happy. 
Roberta currently lives in New York City and owns a public relations agency, but assists her parents with the business remotely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, she boasts that it took learning how to speak English fluently and a lot of hard work to get Greycliff to be considered as one of the most popular tourism spots in this country. We not only have the hotel and restaurant, but we also have now a cigar company, a chocolate company, a winery, the Heritage Museum of the Bahamas, and um, we also have an additional restaurant. Um, so, you know, and then we have an airport lounge. We have other um, activities um, that we do. So it's, it's grown and the Bahamas, you know, has become sort of home for us. And what does Roberta love most about her career in the hospitality and tourism industry? It's never the same any time of day. You know, it could change. You know, you may be doing the same task, but it's never the same regardless of um, what you're doing. You know, it's ever changing. The guests are different. They have different needs. Um, so it's, you know, it's a fun activity, but you have to love it. She gave this special message to her dad this Father's Day. Calm down. <laughs> uh, everyone that works with him will, will, will chime in on that one. <laughs> You know, he, um, but he means well, you know, and he pushes us all to do better. Well, all over the world, sports has always been a strong bond that has connected fathers and sons, and here in the Bahamas is no different. There have been many fathers and sons who have played together or sons who have played for their fathers. Among them, Valo de Merritt and his father, Joey, who together have tremendous success on the volleyball court father-son duo in, in the league, um, won night league championship, uh, national team, um, bronze medal together, and, and numerous Bahama games, gold medals together. Following his footsteps in being first a, a player, a champion, and then going on to coaching and being a champion in that regard. You know, he made it difficult. He, he, he didn't make it easy at all for me to make national team. I, I had to, like, truly earn it. Like, it was easier for me to make national team if other coaches were coaching. Respected him for that, because um, it's nothing like earning your way. I didn't have the, you know, like, hear someone say, oh, you only make the, the, the team because your man was coaching. I never had to hear that because they know I had to earn it. Like, I was probably, like, the last man picked for the team. Roberta's interview made me want to now go to Greycliff um, for Father's Day. You might, you I might thought Reverend Rule interview made you want to go out there and buy a better gift. Well, at least at $200 or $100, $100, $50. That's, 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 that's yeah, you, reasonable. So, you, so you're with me, we're going to buy that gift for today. That's very reasonable. And, and talking about gifts, uh -huh. what do we have? After the break, we have some last minute shoppers who are going to get that special gift for Father's Day. Still waiting to see what I will be getting. of something other than crab and rice or a plain old necktie to give to your dad on Father's Day, well, our Amajal Knowles may have an interesting option just for you. As millions around the world prepare to celebrate fathers this Sunday, ZNS News took to the streets to gather views from Bahamians on the perfect gift for that extraordinary dad. There were mixed views. Supervisor of sales at Bonneville Bones, Joyce Norm, says a quality wardrobe may be something he absolutely loves. A coat suit, a coat suit would be a great gift for daddy because he might want to go to church, be well dressed in a coat suit. Popular items would be short pants, casual pants, undressed pants. With a wide assortment of items to choose from and with many retailers hoping to cash in and rebound from the COVID crisis, Minister at St. Michael's Methodist Church, Philip Stubbs, believes understanding the needs of your dad during this time is key. It's important to speak your dad's um, love language. What does the father want? Some dads want a book. Some wants it, well, would like a tool. Some fathers would like to go to the salon and get a facial. For these men, peace of mind and expressions of love may be the most timely gift of all. What is a good gift for a father or a dad? 
best gift for me with my kids from my kids would be to say daddy I love you the material things don't really matter as much as the verbal expression to show love and to be genuine about it what we have going on in the country right now the best gift would be a peace of mind that him will warm a big meal the ultimate gift for a father is to have family and friends who respect and love him and show him certain courtesy and deference as a man a father is not simply one who as many would call a sperm donor the one who shows care and love for his children protector provider a priest with many gifts up for grabs let's ensure that fathers enjoy the special day it's the thought that counts and that was our Desmond son as we now go to Amajal Knows who's getting all fixed up for Father's Day. Father's Day is fast approaching and what better gift could you get for that hardworking man in your life than something that will soothe his mind, body and soul, a good old fashioned day of pampering. Here's owners at Gifts at Work, Renee Brown, who tells us more. One of the main um, attractions that we have here at Gifts at Work is we do we cater to a lot of men in terms of services and pampering them. Um, one of the main things that they usually request is pedicures, manicures, and yes, men do do pedicures and manicure. Yes, they do. That don't make them no less of a man. Okay, ladies, and um, we do massages, different types of massages, sweetest massages, deep tissue massages, we do reflexologies, um, we also do facials. Brown also speaking to the negative connotations that typically surround men and grooming. That's a horrible uh, perception that, um, should I say, bohemian men have. They feel that if a man get a massage or his nails are done or his heels is nice, that uh, he's kind of soft, but it's the opposite. And um, you look at a man and a man nail is kept and he has a nice pedicure, um, his feet are done, you can consider that gentleman a uh, um, well kept. Also popular at Gifts at Work is a special oil and vinegar facial that I would be lucky enough to receive. We do a special where we do a uh, vinegar and an oil massage what that does is that take out all of the toxins out of the skin um, it also loosens up any ingrown hair that the gentleman might have and so what it does it allows us to take them out quickly less painful and they do get to enjoy a really nice facial and our very own hope shelly ann is back this father's day with a special spoken word take a look a man may be a man, but this man demands respect. Born a bouncing baby boy, fed my mother's milk, grew up to be big and strong, fell down, skinned my knees, fell off of my bicycle, had to get up because big boys don't cry, suffered a broken heart, and then another one, and then another one, had to pick myself up and brush myself off. A man may be a man, but this man demands respect. Have my wife and children still helping mommy, daddy, and my siblings, asking God to help me, wondering will I ever catch a break, balancing work, church and state, and seemingly fighting a losing battle. Children out of control, the rod of correction just not working. A man, may be a man, but this man demands respect. As we look ahead now to the answers, which day did Father's Day originate? June 19, and the winner of that is Rudel Stubbs. And the next answer, what are the flowers for Father's Day? It is a rose, not carnation. Anthonia Carroll is the winner of that prize. And you can pick up your prizes later on today. Well, this morning we have the crab man himself all the way from Andros, Mr. Elon Moxie. Mr. Moxie, welcome to the morning edition. Thank you. So talk a little bit about what have you been up to? Well, you good like morning, that. Bahamas, and happy Father's Day. Well, you know what? I, uh, I just got out of the bush, and I got some crab for fathers, and we're going to let them go. You got crab and rice, crab and this, crab and dough. Enjoy your crabs. 
white crabs, black crabs. White crab, black crabs, they all. Well, let's all right. hear it. In the bush from I was just a little tight pole. See my daddy pushing hard down in the crowd pole. He pushed so hard, he pushed so deep. Say, boy, this crowd kind of hard to reach. So pass me over my hook and king. I ain't let this crowd play no tricks and games. He touched the left, he touched the right. Tickled the north and south, the crowd crawled right on out. Catch the crowd, boy. Catch the crowd, boy. Catch the crowd, boy. Crowd, you walk. Catch the crowd, boy. Catch the crowd, boy. Catch the crowd, boy. Crowd, you walk. Oh, yeah. Come on. All right. Uh. Oh, yeah. Come on. Mama takes her sister to the pond. Let us see how this thing really go. She beat and wash, never get disgust. The froggy jump, my mommy having fun. She say, wash your clothes, wash the clothes, girl. Wash your clothes, tell your clothes all clean. Now. Wash your clothes, girl. Wash your clothes, girl. Wash the clothes, tell your clothes all clean. Now. Catch the crab, boy. Catch the crab, boy. Catch the crab, boy. Crab walking. Catch the crab, boy. Catch the crab, boy. Catch the crab, boy. Crab. Look at the crabs. Lord, Lord, Lord. Go fish him. The dawn, go in the dawn. Shut him. Lord, 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 Lord. What a crab, eh? Where's the black crab? All right. All right. Papa ready to go in the boat. He grab his horse, then he take out the long pole. He say, Mama, come on, let me go. Sculling you down to the big blue hole. Well, snap a bite, I'm so nice, girl. We gonna have crab and rice. And snap it to nice, you say, Scull the boat. Scull the boat. Scull the boat right down to the blue hole. Scull the boat, scull the boat, scull the boat right down to the blue. Ah, uh, ah, uh, go the dawn. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Papa ready to go in the boat. He grab his horse and he take out his long pole. He say, Mama, come on, let me go. Sculling you to the big blue hole. Put the bike on so nice. We gonna have crab and rice. A snap or two nice, you say. Skull the boat. Skull the boat. Skull the boat.